This is the Motorola Defy satellite communications device and in this video I'm going to be asking is it a game changer or does it have some serious flaws? So if you're wondering what it is, how it works and if it's right for you, hopefully this video will help. So let's get started. So let's imagine you're in the hills somewhere, you have a nasty slip or fall, you hear a horrible cracking sound from your leg, excruciating pain, you need help from the emergency services only to find there's no phone signal and you've got no way of contacting anyone. That's where a device like this comes in. So satellite communications enable you to keep in touch, ask for help, even when there's no mobile phone signal. Instead of using a mobile phone network, they use a satellite communications instead. And that hopefully means that you can have communication and contact wherever you are in the country, even if there's no mobile phone signal coverage. Likewise, it means that anyone at home, any loved ones, can contact you with any emergencies or urgent communications. It might be something uh, not very important, like uh, your partner's leaving you. It might be really, really important, like, and they've decided to put all your tents on eBay. If you're out and about, just for the sake of the emergency services, your own skin, it's a really good idea to have a satellite communicator with you. And who knows, you may come across somebody else who needs urgent help, and using one of these could save their life too. Now I'm usually camping out and about on my own. Sometimes I'll be taking my young son with me as well. So it's really important that I can keep in touch. Up to now, I've been using this Spot 3 communications device and it has worked well, but it does have some limitations. The main one is that it only communicates one way. It only transmits, it doesn't receive, and it can only uh, send or preset messages. It's very limited in its uh, communications functions. You can send a check-in, an SOS, or one preset customized messages. There are other alternatives out there from Garmin and Zoleo that do allow you to type in custom messages, but they have been very expensive in the past, not only to buy the unit itself for several hundred pounds, but also the subscription costs and the cost of sending each message can be prohibitively high. And that's where the Motorola Defy unit comes in. Not only is it small and compact and allow two-way communications, but it's also remarkably cheap. So this Defy unit is new on the market. It's about half the price of the nearest competitor and the subscription costs are very cheap as well. And I've been itching to get my hands on one of these for months since I knew it was on its way. Finally got hold of this a few weeks ago and I've been using it and testing it out ever since. So now I think I'm in a pretty good position to comment on its functionality. I bought it with my own money. I've got no particular angle to grind. This is just my own personal experiences and opinions. I'm not a particularly technical expert, but I do enjoy a lot of hill walking. So I have given it a thorough going over in the field myself. Uh, it's also worth pointing out that this is very new to market and it appears there's a lot of changes and uh, enhancements coming downstream. So it may be that uh, things develop over the next few months. So it's well worth subscribing to my channel in case I can uh, publish some updates as things improve. So let's just have an initial look at this unit, shall we? It's about the size of, I don't know, half the size of a pack of playing cards. It's very small and compact. On one side, there's a big orange SOS button. And that's what you hit when you need a helicopter, basically. And on the other side of it, there are three buttons. The first is the power on and off. Next to that is a small button that you press when you just want to send a quick check-in message, giving your location. And the third uh, plastic thing is the cover for the uh, power socket for recharging the unit and that's also got a light next to it which tells you whether or not you've got a satellite connection or not. And the whole thing is held by a strap that loops around underneath the unit. Now as somebody who tries to shave every gram from his pack, I'm really pleased to find that this weighs half the weight of my Spot 3 device and also significantly lighter than the alternatives on the market as well. From that point of view, it's really attractive. So not only is it lightweight, it's also quite durable. It's totally waterproof, so you can leave it exposed on the outside of your pack or clothing all day without any worries. The Defy unit doesn't have the built-in uh, screen with no navigation functions that other devices do. But quite frankly, um, 
these days, I think most people are starting to use uh, the mobile phone apps like the Ordnance Survey app and things like that to do their navigation anyway. So I think that having a, a screen giving you navigation as well is becoming a bit of a thing of the past. So I don't think that that's a major flaw actually with this Defy unit. Let's talk about the messages and how you send them from this Defy unit. The first type of messages is the ones that you send from the unit itself when you don't need a mobile phone. So if your phone fails, battery dead or whatever, you can still send uh, an SOS message using this big orange button on one side. Uh, or you can use the smaller button on the other side to send a quick check-in message giving your location. So this big button is large enough to uh, be reached in an emergency without too much fumbling around. And basically it's the one that uh, connects to an international call center for emergency services and will send emergency help. The other one is a smaller one and that's where you can preset the uh, recipient using the app. And it's a simple, I'm here, I'm good type message that lets them know you're still in one piece and everything's fine. So those messages get sent from the defiant itself. You don't need a mobile phone to send them. Doesn't matter if your battery's died or anything. This will send messages just giving basic, basic updates. The other types of messages are the ones that you use via your mobile phone with a Bluetooth connection to this unit. And they are composed on an app on the phone called Bullet. Okay, so on that app, you compose the messages just as you would do any other messaging service like WhatsApp or Messenger or whatever. In a very similar way, you compose the message to your recipient and send it. And that sends a message via Bluetooth to the unit, which in turn sends it up via satellite. Now, just like some other messaging services, there is a limit on the number of characters you can send. And at the moment, that's 140 characters. Now, is that enough? Personally, I think it is, because basically you're sending a quick message to somebody saying, I'm OK, or please send some more log, or I've run out, or I've lost my car keys. Whatever it may be, 140 characters I've found is absolutely plenty. If the phone has got a mobile phone signal, or even Wi-Fi, then the phone, the app, will use that to send a message over the normal mobile phone network. If there's no mobile phone signal or connection, then the app will use the satellite network to send the message. And this is where the first problem comes in. If the phone signal's a bit weak and a bit flaky, it's coming and going, then the app can get a bit confused to know whether it should be trying to use mobile phone signal to send a message or whether to use a satellite connection. And that has apparently caused a bit of a problem in some cases. So my first strong recommendation would be to switch your phone to uh, flight mode if there's any uncertainty in your mind. So switch it to flight mode, then the phone won't have a choice except but to use the satellite network. So if in doubt, have your phone in flight mode, so you must use a satellite. And to be honest with you, I have my phone in flight mode all the time when I'm out and about walking anyway, simply because it's the best way of preserving the battery life on the phone. <laughs> now, how do you know which way the message was sent via mobile network or by satellite? Well, there's a little orange corner of the message on the app telling you if there's an orange corner on it, it was sent by satellite. No orange little corner means it was sent by the mobile phone. And it's worth mentioning as well that the messaging facility, if you're going to be sending custom messages, does still need your phone. So if your phone battery dies or if there's a problem, you're going to lose that ability. So as always, you'll be needing to look after your battery life in your phone. Remember, they don't like the cold. So I always keep my phone warm inside a trouser pocket or something like that when I'm walking in winter conditions. So you do still need to have a phone working if you want to send uh, custom messages. Now, when the, the recipient of the message gets the message, um, if they don't have the Bullet app, then they will get a simple text message asking them to download the Bullet app so that they can read the message, which is a bit of a faff. If they've got the Bullet app already, it will appear on the Bullet app on their phone. And here comes one of the main problems. Uh, most messaging services come up with a red dot or something like that when there's a new message waiting for you. What I found with my wife is that doesn't happen with the recipient's phone. The only time the red dot appears in next to the Bullet uh, app icon on the phone is after you've already opened the app to check for messages, which is a kind of a bit the wrong way around. So what we've ended up doing is my wife's checking the Bullet app every 20 minutes, 
throughout the day to see if a message has come through, which seems to me a bit the wrong way around, personally. Now, hopefully that's just a glitch and when it will be corrected later on. But for the moment, it's been a little bit annoying. Now, once you've sent the message, how do you know whether it's been sent or received? Well, uh, similar to other messaging apps, once it's been sent, one grey tick appears next to the message in the app. Two grey ticks means that it's been received and transmitted to the recipient. And those two ticks turn blue once the recipient has actually read the message. Right, so now let's talk a little bit about satellites. We'll try not to get too technical. Shouldn't be a problem. So, uh, Garmin, Zoleo, etc. They uh, communicate via low uh, Earth orbit satellites, which are travelling across the sky at any one time. So when you go to send a message, the unit has to go and find the relevant satellite that's overhead at that moment and uh, send a message via that. Um, now, uh, they, I think, are in orbit of something like 500 or 100 miles above the Earth's surface. The DEFI uses an uh, Inmarsat satellite that's in a stationary it's going to the orbit. You can't have a stationary orbit. It's stationary in the sky in a fixed position above the Earth. There are four of them, and because they're stationary, uh, they're at, and they're at a much higher uh, orbit. They're at about 22,000 miles above the Earth. So there are fewer of them, and they're stationary, which means that once the device has found the satellite, it doesn't need to keep looking every time you want to send a message. And for that reason, once you've switched on the DeFi, you can just leave it on and it can just remember where the satellite is all the time. Now that brings with it some advantages in that you don't have to do this looking for the HAD satellite thing every time. But um, there have been reports that it's been quite difficult to get that satellite connection established. So on the DeFi, there's a little uh, light next to the satellite icon that flashes green when it's uh, got in contact with a, a satellite. Um, and I've always, uh, up to now, found it a bit of a struggle sometimes to get that connection made. So there are a couple of tips I can give you. The first thing is that um, the, it's always the same satellite and it's always in the same place. It's the Imasat 4 and that's located in the UK at about 167 degrees, which is give or take south. So it's in the southern sky. And its elevation in the UK is uh, around 30 or 40 degrees above the horizon. So if you're looking for a good connection, that's where you need to have a, sort of a window in the sky. Um, and uh, I've also found an app. I'll show the details below. Uh, and this app also helps you to locate the satellite in the sky. If you've lost your bearings or whatever, or if you're in a deep valley, you can see if there's a line of sight to it. And I found that app to be quite helpful. So, for example, on Dartmoor a few weeks ago, I was sheltering from the southerly winds behind one of the tours, which is a big block of solid granite. And lo and behold, the Defy was having a struggle seeing through that to see to the south to make connection with the satellite. When I emerged out from behind the tour into the wind and the rain, then there was a line of sight and I could send and receive messages OK. So another little trick to help you make a connection with a satellite if you're struggling, if it's taking quite a long time, is the old trick, have you tried turning it off and on again? So if it's taking its time to uh, turn green for the satellite connection, then just power off the unit, power it on again, and that's often helped me to establish the satellite connection. Don't ask me why. Now I've mentioned that the Defy unit uh, has got a nice light weight and one reason for that is the size of the batteries inside it. So uh, they're I guess relatively small and light uh, but I've found that that's ample for my needs. So if I leave on a say a two night three day trip when I come back to base the battery remaining is about 60% on this. So I would say this would be good for you know four or five days quite comfortably. And if you're out on the trail, you can always recharge it from a power bank anyway, so that's really not an issue. When it comes to recharging, uh, I've found that basically it's uh, a minute per percent. So if I've got um, a 60% charge, within 40 minutes it's got up to 100% charge, if you follow me. If it's empty, then you know, an hour and a half, and that's getting pretty much towards fully charged. So it's quite quick. Now, how do you know what the battery level is? 
Well, you can't tell on the device itself. You have to use the Bullet app, and that gives you an accurate indication of the battery life. OK, so that's kind of the features and how it works. Let's talk a little bit about the price. Right, so um, this divide device costs about half as much to buy as any equivalent on the marketplace today. And if you uh, buy it, you get a year's worth of their basic messaging package. And that's advertised as being enough for 30, up to 30 messages a month, up to 30 messages a month. Sounds great. But the actual number of messages you can send is measured in terms of the data allowance, not the number of messages. And so the advertising of up to 30 messages uh, isn't giving quite the right impression. Right, now we come on to the problem with managing your message allowance. You can only track what you're using on the app. So you can see how, many, how much of your data allowance you've used so far, but that's, that's it. You cannot top up your data bundle with a bolt-on when you're using it in the field. You can only upgrade to a more expensive or annual plan. And I think that's a major, major issue, and frankly, a bit. St I think it's really quite strange that it's come to market without that uh, facility. So if you're out and about and you're starting to use up a lot of your data, you've got no way of buying a bolt-on at the moment as I speak. Now, I have been checking into this and I have asked but the question about you know, when is this going to happen. As of yet, although they say the bolt-on facility is coming, there's no word as to actually when that's going to happen. Second problem is that um, there's no way of knowing that what happens to a message, uh, the, the first message you send over and above your data allowance. So what happens to message number 31? Yeah, does it get rejected? Does it get transmitted? What happens? Other people have asked this question and there have been responses that say, OK, well, they would just take it out of the following month's data bundle. But I'd rather not be, have to sort of rely on that, if you don't mind. So I really, really would like to know. Now, I've asked this question to both the UK importer and to Bullet themselves through the um, website and I haven't had an answer yet. And I think that's a little bit disconcerting and I think that they should resolve that straight away, hopefully. It will be addressed soon and uh, we'll get an update before too long. And whilst we're talking about weaknesses in the device, the other um, glaring omission from the app is any kind of tracking device for your route, if you like a, a breadcrumb trail of where you've been. So if this is doing a regular uh, connection to a satellite, it's quite surprising to me that you don't have the option to do a uh, five minute, 10 minutes or whatever uh, point or marker on your route to track where you've been. Now I know that a lot of the uh, route finding apps, the mapping apps, do have that already built in. Uh, OS Maps has it, Strava has it, etc. But it really wouldn't take much to include that onto the Bullet app, and I'm surprised it isn't already there. Okay, so after all that, what's the verdict on the Motorola Defy? Is it a game changer? Well, quite frankly, yes, I think it is, because for the first time, it's made satellite communications, two-way communications, much more affordable. Once you've bought the unit, you know, the subscription's are as little as £5 a month, and that's just the price of a fancy coffee, isn't it? After all, let's face it, this could save your life, and it could help save the life of other people too. So certainly, I'm kicking this, and I recommend other people have it as well when they're heading out into the wilds. I think it's a really important and useful two-way communications device. But it has got its issues at the moment, and I'm hoping that a lot of those are simply because it's quite new to market. As for the downsides, well, getting your head around the Bullet app, learning how to use it, um, I haven't found very intuitive and there are some weird things going on with the message confirmations and the red dot to show there's a new message, things like that. I hope these are just uh, teething problems, but it seems to me that perhaps the app hasn't had as much beta testing as it could have, and that's a worry. So uh, I'd probably a good idea to subscribe to the channel because as things evolve and develop, I'll be posting updates as and when I can. Other weak points about it? Well, people said that some of these buttons are a bit flimsy. I don't have a problem with that at all. Likewise, people are worried about the big orange SOS button being easy to press. 
I haven't found that an issue. But what I do have a problem with is the way that this strap works. Yes, it's easy to clip onto your pack or a shoulder strap, but it bounces around and bangs and knocks and is really annoying. So uh, without further ado, once I've finished making this video, I'm gonna be taking this strap off and uh, bringing up something uh, myself using some Dyneema or some a cord of some kind or perhaps a couple of carabiners just to fix it permanently so it sits on the rucksack strap shoulder strap so it doesn't knock around at all but it's still quite easy to reach and hopefully it's got a good line of sight to the satellite as well and lastly just uh, worth mentioning it doesn't yet have global coverage currently this is good for all of Europe and North America and up to 70 miles uh, off the coast so it's pretty good for uh, yachtsmen as well amateur yachtsmen or whatever but if you're heading out into the wilds of Nepal for a few weeks this probably isn't the right system for you to take with you so yes I do think this is a game changer because uh, two-way messaging is very very useful and it's made it much more affordable than it ever has been before what about you have you got one of these have you started to use it yet have you experienced the same issues that I have have you got any comments of your own if you have then please let me know in the comments below I'd be really interested to hear what you've got to say now we know this is a brand new product, it's evolving all the time. I'll be tracking things closely and hopefully uh, publishing updates on this video. So, so please uh, subscribe if you're interested in uh, receiving those. In the meantime, if you found this video useful, helpful, then please give me a subscribe and a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it.